What's up, YouTube fam? How are you guys? It has been a long time since I've been on here. I know, I realize, I owe you guys a huge apology. What can I say? February just emotionally took me out, not because of the markets, just because of some other things in my career, which I am now no longer stressed by. So my mind is clear to dedicate more time to YouTube. And what I thought I would do today is just my morning routine. Just a really quick 10 minute video, what I think is going to happen in the markets, talk about what happened over the last couple of days and what I think might happen next, see what we can find, anything to be careful of. Thinking of doing videos on my morning updates, on the days that I trade, which is only about three days a week. So if that is the kind of content that you're interested in, then please make sure that you leave me a comment below and let me know. All right, let's get into the chart. So before we focus in on Bitcoin, I just want to have a look at what's going on in the markets in general. Up here, we've got Bitcoin, which we will take a deeper dive into. But this resistance here at 44.6 has been sitting there for a long time. We haven't cracked it yet. However, we are making higher lows on the daily. That's looking positive, but we need to see a little bit closer what's going on in this zone here. Ethereum in the middle here is looking good at a glance, but we have broken this double trend line here. We did create a really nice W pattern at the bottom of a downtrend on the daily, which is something that I really love for a break to the upside. However, Ethereum does have more work to do before we can actually think we're bullish. The one I've been watching very closely here, let's actually make that one big is the USDT dominance because this has been telling us a very big story. We've been holding this trend line the entire time and also been holding this weekly resistance by the candle close and this daily resistance by wicks. It looks like last night we have broken that. So if the USDT dominance heads down, that could actually be quite bullish for crypto in general. So that's currently looking positive for crypto. Gold over here is not doing anything different to what I've been watching for the last week or so on gold. We have this really nice curve going on here. I want to see if this actually creates somewhat of a flag to create a cup and handle. And if we actually get that, would expect to break out to the upside. So far, it's just a sell off. It's You can't really call that a flag just yet. S&P looks like it's recovering quite well after this support, this monthly support level that we hit. However, this is just a move to the upside. We don't have a retest to confirm a new uptrend just yet. So I really want to see S&P pull back, create a higher low, and then you'll feel a little bit safer. Otherwise, this could just as easily collapse and fall back down. So we don't really have on a higher time frame a change in trend in the S&P just yet. And finally, the Dixie had the beautiful W pattern right at, on the bottom of the trend line, which then started this uptrend here. Looks like it's trying to create a bit of a bull flag here. So we had this push up potential bull flag, which will test this top trend line and also may come back to test this trend line here. Need to see if we hold above this resistance if we can hold there we might expect a little bit of a run to around that hundred level to begin with so overall the market's not looking too bad at a bigger picture will we get a shorter term sell-off which is just a retracement to give us a chance to enter or will we get a full reversal that's what I want to kind of discover today so let's take a bigger look at Bitcoin now on the four hour chart looking at RSI we're peaking up here into the overbought region. We're not quite there yet. So there could be a little bit more steam to go according to the RSI. Up at these levels here is kind of where I would get a little bit more cautious. If we think about it, Bitcoin's had this little bit of a retracement. If it does push through one more time, it's probably going to hit this resistance level up here, which would push us over into the overbought region. So according to the RSI, it looks like we do have a bit more room to the upside. Looking at what has happened over the last few days, we have have formed this really nice uptrend. The initial key level to break was this one here at 42,500, which we did break overnight. Currently seeing a few weeks here. This I am recording this before the daily open of our time zone, Australian time zone. So really want to see what happens when the new daily candle opens. However, just looking at a glance, the kind of 
level that I'm watching for, what I really want to watch out for at the moment is this kind of level here. And the reason that that's the level that's got my interest is because when we had this previous period of consolidation, which was quite a highly volatile area, this here was the candle that tried to bring it down. Then we had last attempts to push price up with that wick that was heavily smacked down and brought Bitcoin right back down to 37 in the end. Now we've revisited that zone and we've only wicked halfway into it. I'm going to match this up with the heat maps and and have a look at the liquidation levels to see if that is spot on but just at a glance that's kind of the area that I'm watching for at the moment and also looking at the visible range here we can see that the imbalance was here right where price is right now so price is currently filling in this little VPVR gap and if we can get above it you can see that it's going to be difficult for price to get further above that supply zone but I do also want to mark out the very top of this range resistance. So around 44.9 would be a possibility as well. So let's now look at the one hour. Now, immediately what stands out to me on the one hour is this declining volume in what could be a flag formation. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean bearish because a flag pattern leads to a breakout. So you do usually get volume decrease as it comes into the pointy end of the flag and then the volume comes in and that's what causes the breakout. So it's kind of an easy trade when it's a symmetrical triangle because we don't really have to try and guess which way it's going to go. We just need to wait and see does it break the top trend line or the bottom and if it's the top we can long if it's bottom we short but looking at the overall big picture if we did break to the upside what's in it because we know we have to deal with this supply zone here will there be enough momentum to push through to get us up to this level that would make a better trade but it'd be a high risk trade because we've got to get through this zone a break to the downside would probably be a much better and a much easier trade to take because we've got this level here here is a target right above where the VPVR sticks out here. And then depending on how dramatic the move down is, we could even come all the way back to the point of control at 39 kind of level. So say 38.9 to 39.3 as a second target. So over the last few days, we really have had a really kind of nice uptrend. It, it has been quite volatile, which has been great to scalp this range. You can see here, we had this big push up, big wick here, and then big sell off and then same thing had a big push up bit of consolidation sell off back to the same area and now we've got this big push up consolidation will we have a sell off back to this area will we have a repeat of what happened here that's what we need to watch out for today so let's have a look at the heat maps to see if we can see where the bears and the bulls are currently looking at binance futures this area stands out to me immediately at 43,800. I want to mark that out, see how that is right in that supply zone that we identified. So that does give me one hint that if this triangle breaks out to the upside, we could get some volatility into this zone, tap on that, and then a potential reversal. When I look at this number, 692 is getting into the high zones. So as long as those orders stay there, if price does push up there, it could cause a fairly decent sell-off. However, we've got to remember that these are only limit orders being placed right now, and it could be whale games encouraging people to open shorts just under this level with stop losses just above the level. And then as soon as price gets close it fills your shorts they remove their order and price continues up shooting right through taking out your stop loss which provides them liquidity so know that this level isn't a guarantee but it's something we want to watch what i do like about it is that over the last few candles this level has stayed here so when it stayed there that gives me a hint that this might be a genuine order it's when it flashes on and off that it might be a spoof order looking below price We've got 472 at 42,000, 499 at 41,850, and we don't really have anything of concern below. So this may not end up being a huge sell-off if we do push up and then come down. So this is interesting because now these orders here are showing just a little bit below this level here, which was a previous resistance and a current support. So that tells me maybe this isn't a triangle. Maybe it's going to end up being a descending triangle and maybe what they might do is try to come down, fill these, send price up, then a potential reversal back down here. Let's see what we can see on BitMEX. 
42,950 on BitMEX is the top level. Can't really see anything of concern above that. Can't really see anything of concern below that either. The highest lower order is 41,900, which kind of lines up with this Binance one at 41,850. So when I can find the two levels that line up on BitMEX and Binance, that gives more weight to that level. So that is leading me to believe we may come down at least for a retracement to this 41,850. Maybe we're building an actual bull flag it's too early to tell just yet and then we will get that push to the upside but the other thing too that we need to be prepared for is that what I genuinely find is that when price pushes up for a couple of days through a couple of trading time zones meaning whilst UK is awake whilst USA is awake which this push here was during end of UK start of US time then I usually find that our time can reverse it so I definitely want to be cautious of longs and and shorts right now to give you a visual. So these are the three kind of trade ideas. Potential short if we fail to hold above this support and we retest that 42,200 area, there's a little day trade short, a three to one risk to reward, depending on where your stop needs to be at the time. Back down to this the top of this take profit area. Option two is that we come down this level here holds as support. And if it holds as support, then there's a long back up just underneath here, which is a potential three to one risk to reward. And then step three is if we do actually get that long up to here and we see rejection in this supply zone, hard to say exactly where the entry will be, but the stop would definitely be above the supply zone. And if you get the right confirmations in the candlesticks at the time, this could be a short back down to the initial take profit area as well, which looks like a 2.7 to 1 potential trade. So these are the three options that I'm looking at today. Finally, let's have a look at the current open trades and where we are at risk of liquidation. So currently it looks like, what are we up to here? 14 billion worth of longs are at risk of liquidation right now. That doesn't worry me. That doesn't signal huge sell-off just yet. Usually when that gets into the mid 20s to 30s, that's when I expect a big move. But at the 14 kind of area, it could just be a pullback. And then looking at the areas above current price, the only two that kind of stand out to me is this one here at 43,000 and then this one at 43.8. We do still have these bigger ones up here, but we got to get through here first. So let's mark out that 43,000 to 43.8, see where that lines up with the supply zone on our chart so far. And let's change these coordinates. So as you can see now that we've had a look at that, that actually does, it doesn't, it didn't move our supply zone too much, but it lines up with the very top of those Binance shorts that we found. And BitMEX is right underneath that level as well. So this 43 to 43. Point eight. If price does bounce today and, and starts to head up, this is definitely the zone to watch. I wouldn't automatically short it either. I would definitely wait for rejection in this zone because there is a chance that if we have high volatility that we could even spike up to this resistance before anything turns around. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this morning routine. Please don't forget, leave me a comment if this was helpful and let me know if you'd like me to continue doing my normal morning routine with you guys and also if you're looking for a trading platform to trade on check the links in the description below my preferred exchange to trade on of course is okx and there is a link there that will get you discount on fees have an amazing day trade safe and i will talk to you soon